Hi guys, I'm Samina, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to have a look at the 10 best tricks and tips that you're gonna be needing in 2023 in Excel. Let's get to it. Okay, let's go. So the first one is flash fill. Now what we need to do is to split Catherine and Dale into two different columns, the first name and the last name. So we just simply type in Catherine here, press Control E, and it simply copies it all the way down to the end. Then we want to do the surname. So we add Dale and do the same thing. Control E. There you have it. Okay, here's number two, filling in the blank. So instead of typing in training all the way down to each single box, this is what you need to do. You need to highlight the column over here, Control G, we go to special, then we go to blanks, press OK, and now up to the formula bar, press equals, click on the cell which is above, control, enter, and there you have it. Okay, number three is how to add a percentage faster. So usually, is this what you do? Go up here, you sum that up, enter, and then you just go start to do the percentages, divide by that, and then you have a percentage. No, there's a simpler way to do this. So what we need to do is highlight the cells over here, control Q. Now we come up with the chart here, we go over to the totals, we belong to the percentage total, and there you have it, percentages right on the column next to your data. Okay, number four, conditional formatting. So this is used for various different things. If you want to highlight all of the employees that joined after the year 2020, just highlight that column, go to conditional formatting. We go over to the highlight cell rules and then we go to greater than 2020. There we go. We can fill it into red or green. And these are your new employees. Okay, number five, sum if. This is a function where you need to look for a certain criteria in a list and then do the sum according to the number of sales in the column. So here we go. If we just type in equals and sum if. So what we're trying to say is we look at the range and we need to find the criteria. So we're looking at the department. We want the department to be gifts. So we need to put this in quotes. we go and what we need to do is tell it Excel to have a look at the data here and sum up only the items that are gifts over here so there we have it 7,000 3,500 and 3,500 makes 7,000 so all we need to do is X lookup this is the lookup value here we need to look up the array here, comma, and this is the column that we want returned. And there you have it. Double click to bring the data down. Number seven are spark lines. These are very easy to do. So we have a table of data here and we want to have a look at the trend without having to make a complicated chart. So all we need to do is Go over to the insert. We're going to go over to the line. We can highlight the data first. Over to the line. Pull this up. We already have the data range here and the location where you want the range to appear is in this column here. Simple as that. Click that and double click it down to bring the data for the rest. Now, Lines are pretty nice, but so are columns. So let's try it again with a column. Go back to the insert, highlight the data here, the column, and now where is the range we want it to appear? Right here. There you have it. Drag it down, and there's a simplified chart to show a level of data that you want to have a look at. Number eight is count it. So what we want to have a look at is the number of products in this list that are from the department of gifts without having to count them one by one. So what we need to do is use the formula count if. So 
we're telling Excel to count only if there's a certain criteria. The range is this and the criteria is gifts. So we want only the items that have gifts. It does detect the, um, the lowercase and uppercase, so that's not a problem. So there are two items in the gift section. Okay, so let's have a look at dates and days. Now we have a number of employees over here and the date of joining. And perhaps you'd like to give a bonus to people who are there for two years or three years. And you want to know the date that they joined and how many days or years have passed since they've been there. So the first thing to do is put a reference for today's date. And how you do that is just an equals today and you just close the bracket. And that gives you today's date. So every time this sheet opens, it's always refreshed to the date of today. So in Excel, as it's based on numbers, we just need to do the difference between today's date and we're going to lock this reference because we're going to be using this for the other dates as well and other employees. And we go to the date of joining. And here we have the number of days since today that Catherine Dell has joined the company. Drop it down all the way. Now, what we want to do is convert this to years and we're going to use the function called convert. There we go. This is the syntax down here. So what we do is we just do convert. And what essentially we're doing is converting this cell CJ4 from day to, as you can see, the drop down already detects that that's day. And so you may want to be changing into the other date options. And we're going to change it into year. And this can work the other way around as well. Close the bracket. There we go. Oh, that did not work. As we've typed in year and not YR, which is what Excel is looking for. So there we go. Let's try that once more with a small. And there we go. Now Excel is happy. There we go. Let's drag this down. And we have the number of years that each employee has worked in the company. OK, and now brings us to number 10, transpose. So this is where Excel is pretty interesting if you would like to have a look at your data in a different way. So if you have it split over the horizontal columns with the data in each year and you want to have a look at it um, rather than horizontally, you want to have a look at it vertically. We basically select the data, control C to copy it and then go over to the column or the cell where you want the data to be and you use a function called transpose. So the shortcut is over here, but let's just go into paste special and have a look. And we have a function here called transpose. And there you go. Your data is now the other way around. And that's it for today, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the session. If you did, like and subscribe and see you next time.